All right, so if you're wondering what that was, it was my 10-gallon uh, plasma cannon monstrosity that I built. Why did I build it? Um, but because I could, but more so because I was intrigued by the uh, first couple of uh, plasma cannons and bottle shooters, and you can see uh, some of the videos of that in action right there. Um, it was an intriguing thing. It was a lot of fun to do, so I figured I'd go big or go home. Well, actually, I did this at home anyway. But anyway... Here's a shortened video because there's probably two hours worth of a video that I've compressed in, a, I think, five or six minutes. And I'm um, just going to kind of narrate over what I was doing to get these things built. And um, hopefully uh, you'll have some fun out of this. Now, I'm not advocating that anybody build one of these. Uh, this is purely educational and for fun. And you can see that, you know, I got educated and I had a lot of fun doing this. But anyway, before we start, hit the subscribe button and the bell and uh, let's get going. All right, so to get started, I got, of course, two five-gallon water jugs, hot glued them together, and I did that just so that I could get them to stay together while I did a, a final and permanent uh, fix, which in this case was to use some 1708 fiberglass cloth. And with an epoxy resin, uh, go ahead and uh, put these all together. So you can see me here just soaking the epoxy resin in. I'm going to start rolling it, and you'll get a close-up here in a second. I'm getting this really saturated with that epoxy. Uh, I don't want these things separating when we fire them. I have no idea how much power these things are going to have, but um, certainly uh, the, the stronger I make it, the better it is. So after I finished the epoxy, what I did is I let it, I let it cure, and I uh, came back the next day, and, and me being the master of overbuilding things, I, of course, uh, added some plexiglass, uh, you could call them struts, if you will, um, by drilling a, a hole on either side of this, and then... Uh, and then driving a bolt through it. Lots of fun this. Yes, I am. I am a master of overbuilding things sometimes, but yeah, better safe than sorry. All right, so the next step after this is let's cut out the sides of one of these uh, uh, one of these jugs, and uh, that's going to be where the uh, ball of fire comes out of, if you will. And uh, I actually went through a couple of Dremel wheels on this thing that kept busting on me. There's probably better ways to do this jigsaw or something, but that, I had that handy, so that's what I used. I actually drilled a hole in the back of this and widened it. Um, I can't remember the exact dimensions. I, I think it was 7 16 or something like that, but I didn't have a drill bit that would do that. So um, I went ahead and uh, reamed it out. Now, of course, one of the things that you need to do is secure this to a base. So I happen to have this all piece of wood that used to be our fishing rod holder and um, I went ahead and secured it using uh, pipe hanger straps and we got that in there uh, it hopefully wouldn't go anywhere it's always fun watching stuff in fast motion isn't it but anyway let's get through this segment and you can see where uh, we really started having some fun which is uh, getting all the hose on that thing to wrap it around that was that proved to be extremely uh, Aggravating. I won't torture you with uh, all the details, but you'll see a little bit of it. So one thing I noticed with the uh, last builds was uh, with the cannon, the hose had a tendency to pop out even though it was glued in. So what I did in this case was ran the hose through the complete uh, assembly and put a, a pipe clamp on the end of it. And that way if the uh, hot glue should happen to not hold it, which probably wouldn't, the uh, pipe clamp would keep it from flying out and spraying fire everywhere, I guess, or plasma, whatever it is at that point. And here goes the hot glue. Well, tons of hot glue, probably about two sticks worth. Shoved up on there, let it cool. And once that's done, we're going to start the wrapping, which is what we're doing here. Now, one of the things, this is 50 foot of, of 5 8 hose, and um, no matter what you did, there was kinks in it. So every loop that we went around basically had to unkink it and move it back and forth. Uh, we went through this iteration a couple of times. Finally got it so that we had a pretty neat wrap. Now the excess hose you see there, um, well we did a couple more wraps obviously. You can see us pulling that through. And of course there's going to be a kink in there and I'm going to try to straighten it out. And it's coming soon. It's coming. Oh, there it is. Kink as expected. So we ended up pulling it back and forth a few times until we got the kink out. And uh, then whatever hose I had left over, I actually wrapped around the front a few times. Now here we have it strapped to a bench, and this is just a test shot. Um, what you'll see is that this thing sounded like a weak map 
part. Uh, and I couldn't really quite understand why. But you'll see a couple of these uh, test shots here. And, um, and I'll explain what we did to correct that. Basically, I cut a hole in the hose. And I took an air fitting, the uh, brass air fitting, and I stuck it in there and taped it in. And the whole idea is that I, I believe that there was not enough oxygen actually feeding into, into that system for it to ignite adequately. And uh, by adding that, the Venturi effect draws in oxygen. And we started getting a little bit better blast out of that. You can see that in this video right here. It's better. It's better. I actually get it to go much better than that uh, later on in the video. So those were short bursts, probably 30 seconds of propane. And uh, one of the things I ended up doing was testing with longer bursts of propane. And I finally started getting some really decent blasts. Now, there's a good one in slow-mo that you can see. This wouldn't be right without doing some nighttime shots. So here's some nighttime shots. And I actually had a lot of fun doing this at night. That was not slow-mo, that was actually the way it traveled, and I disconnected the hose and let oxygen in, which is why it went so slow. There's another nice boom, and uh, here's yet another nice boom. I would be remiss if I didn't do a nice slow-motion one, and there it is. And you can, actually, that was interesting, because you can see the boom expand. So that, I think I'm taking it to the max pressure limit that that uh, contraption would be able to, uh, to handle. Anyway, that's it. That's my adventure in the 10-gallon uh, plasma cannon, which is really two 5-gallon jugs put together. But uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, hit share and like. And definitely don't forget to subscribe. And by the way, don't try this at home. Thanks for watching.